Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to AVX Live. I'm Joe Gilderson, President of Corporate Audio Visual Services. And finally, I am <laughs> joined by my co-host, Mr. Ryan Fitch. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's nice to be back. I took a nice, lavish vacation. Yeah, you were living it up no. down in Texas. Down in Texas. Over in Texas? Down. Over. Down and down. over. Down and over. <laughs> Southwest. Southwest. This is a geography episode, folks. Here it Either comes. Either way, last week we had a great conversation with our friend Allie Curtis of Make-A-Wish Hudson Valley. They're doing incredible things for both the, the people and their families that are involved, their wish children and their families. And we love working with them. So it's really great to have Allie on the show. Today, we're going to have a longtime client and colleague and partner in a really big event coming up. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a few minutes. But well, Mr. Finch, why don't mm -hmm. you tell people how they can find us? Do you still okay. remember how to do this? I do. You can find us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube Live. You can do it every Wednesday at 1 p.m. And while you're there, you'd be foolish not to drop us a comment, be part of the show. And you should also like, comment, share, subscribe, all the above. Please, thank you. That'd be very much appreciated. And if you miss the show, you can find it on YouTube later on in a video archive. But you can also find it in little bite-sized pieces on Facebook and on Instagram later on. There you have it, Joe. See, I remembered everything. I didn't miss a thing. Very nice. The good thing is I mm -hmm. actually deleted one of those pop-ups and so it wasn't there. But either oh. way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you made the first mistake. There we go. It, it's okay. It's okay. I did stop downloading the driver that I was looking to download because I thought that might not be a good time for that. Mm. But uh, how about we get this show going? What do we think? Let's do it. All right. So let me tell you about our guest, Rose Kappa Rotuno. Rose is the Vice President for Institutional Advancement at Wartburg a senior living and healthcare organization. She's responsible for planning, managing, and implementing activities and campaigns that increase, diversify, and sustain philanthropic support for Wartburg and its affiliates. Rose also manages marketing and oversees community relations and volunteer efforts. Before coming to Wartburg, Rose was the president and founder of the Event Department, a boutique event planning and resource development company that worked mostly with nonprofits. Over the course of 20 plus years, she worked with over 175 organizations and helped raise more than $30 million. But now together with several local leaders, she created the Westchester Women's Summit, which is a conference now in its third year with a focus on empowering and inspiring women. Please welcome to the show, Rose Kappa Rituna. Hey, hi guys. Hello, hello. Good to have you here, Rose. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this. This is really fun. Absolutely. Oh, Rose, you're part of everything we do. You're always invited. Well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> Just jump in anytime you want. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> Well, this is great. I mean, it, it's, you've, uh, you know, we've worked on many different types of events together over the years. And, and I think it's really great that you're here today. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about this very special event, the Westchester Women's Summit. But uh, I think before we do that, maybe a little bit of background is how you got into event planning to begin with and fundraising development. Maybe you could start there a little bit. Rose. Sure. Um, actually, it's kind of, um, a winding road. I went to college, uh, Pace University, for international business, and I actually studied Japanese. Oh. Um, and so I wasn't going to have anything to do with anything in nonprofit. But um, in my senior year, I uh, did an internship with uh, March of Dimes for their Walk America campaign. And I kind of caught the bug. It just was so exciting and interesting <laughs> and amazing to be part of a movement that wasn't just about stockholders and making money for unknown uh, entities. This was really about making a difference. And um, that just sort of got me to thinking maybe I should be trying something different. And uh, my first job out of college was with the United Way and I loved it. So it was really um, a nice way to use the talents and skills that I had for something for a greater good. 
Hmm. So it's the uh, the mission of these organizations. Is that it's like it infected you? Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah. I mean, when you go to work for like an international company, at the end of the day, it's really about profit and loss mm. and stockholder benefits and all that kind of stuff. But when I go to work using the same talents and experience for a nonprofit, mm. the end result is more personal. It's about helping an individual. It's a help about helping families. Um, it's about um, helping movements, you know, whether it's arts or, or whatever. So to me, it just made more um, personal satisfaction to be part of something that made a significant difference. And then when I, you know, wanted to start a family, um, I tried to figure out a way I could do what I was doing and still uh, make a living. And that's when I started uh, the event department and um, was able to work uh, alongside um, taking care of my kids and my family and kind of on my terms, um, which was really exciting. And, and all the experience I had in the nonprofit world before that really allowed me and helped me to do that. Well, that's great. I mean, it's it's great when you get a sense of purpose and fulfillment out of the, the work that you're doing. And if you find a way to make a living off it, too, I mean, that's the uh, that's the goal. Uh, now, do you speak Japanese? I still remember a bit of it. And uh, my husband worked for a Japanese company for a really long time. So they'd always put us at the president's table so that they could like make fun of my attempts at Japanese. But it was uh, <laughs> it was always a good a good time. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I'm I'm resisting the urge to ask you to insult Joe in Japanese, but uh, I'll hold it back. Maybe we do it backstage afterwards. You know, I was going to put some characters up on the banners, but I don't think I have that keyboard. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> different keyboard. Different keyboard. That's really my problem today. I need a different keyboard. <laughs> That's your problem. That okay. got it. You know, Rose, I think you are officially the first person we've had on AVX Live that speaks Japanese. Ah, somebody I mean, got it, in, yeah. yeah. Okay, there we go. We got a phrase. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Mr. The one Hobart. I used a lot was go men the side, which was forgive me, I made a mistake. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, that seems like it might be useful when you don't really know the, the, the full language, but. Okay. I, I almost had to say that about a minute before we went live. But, uh, but we're okay. <laughs> I would have been doing the intro just fine. Don't you worry. <laughs> so, Rose, now you're working as the VP of Institutional Advancement. What's it like being back working for really just one organization as opposed to, you know, a wide variety and having just one mission? I mean, is it, does it feel different? You know, I, I have to say no, because um, one of the real exciting things about working at Warburg is that it isn't just one organization. I mean, it's one type of organization. It's senior healthcare and living but we cover so many different aspects of senior care. There's individual living, there's assisted living, there's uh, rehab, there's adult daycare, there's home health care, there's hospice care, we have a nursing home. So each of these different elements has different missions and purposes. They're all under the same umbrella, but they're all marketed differently and they all have different needs and um, they all pull at a different part of my uh, skill set. Um, but what's nice about what I'm doing is it's kind of taking everything that I've ever done in my whole career and put it into one place and um, allows me to really be creative. I mean, my, my boss is amazing. He basically tells me, um, you know, you figure it out, you do it. And, uh, well, you know, I'm here if you need me. And so he allows me that autonomy and um, the ability to make decisions. So in a lot of ways, I feel like it's my company. Um, and I love that. Um, and I have his support to move things forward. So, um, you know, in that respect, I, I don't miss having my own company at all. And, you know, a steady paycheck is always exciting too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that tends to help, right? Yeah, but, yeah. Well, now, is there is there anything from, you know, previous life that, that you do miss? Anything that, uh, you know, you, you, you find yourself thinking about or, or reminiscing about? You know, not not so much. I mean, when you have your own company, you are it. You know, you do mm. the marketing, you do the finance, you do, you know, the promotions. You're always looking for your next uh, client and setting up the next year. So there's a level of stress when you're the be all and end all um, that mm. I don't miss at all. Um, and the only thing I might have missed would have been the creativity or the freedom to try different things. And I've just been so blessed that the job I have still gives me all that satisfaction. So I don't sure. really miss a whole lot about it. I certainly don't miss paperwork and taxes and, and all that kind of stuff. 
Well, that's funny. Joe loves those things. Paperwork and taxes. <laughs> he talks about them all the time. I just can't wait to dig into that. Yeah. Well, the, Especially because March 15th is right around the corner. I don't mind April. 15th. I know, right? Like that, but the thing that's great, too, is that my boss basically said, you know, if there's people that I'd like to volunteer for or help out or be a part of, as long as it's not a direct conflict with what I'm doing for my current uh, employer, he's happy to explore those synergies and make sure that we stay connected to the things that are important to me in the community. Oh, that's great. It's great, you know, knowing that, that somebody that you're working for has your your interests at heart, you know, and, and in my case, Joe loves doing payroll. So that works out for me, too. So I totally hear you. Those are great comments. I mean, this is truly the peanut gallery. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, you know, that's uh, that, that's pretty amazing by itself that you're mm -hmm. allowed to have some of that freedom that still helps you get the personal satisfaction really in both sides of the equation. And that, that's pretty great. It's really pretty cool. So it seems like you still have your hands in at least one event, mainly this event happening next week, the Westchester Women's Summit. And uh, my understanding is you're the creator of this great event. How did you come up with this idea? Um, I've actually been um, sort of marinating in this idea for a really long time. Um, about 15, 20 years ago, I, ended, I had seen a conference that was similar to this done by Maria Shriver in uh, California. And I thought to myself, this would be something really neat to do in Westchester. But I didn't have the connections or the resources to push it through. So I kept a folder. So every time I thought of an idea or a concept, I would throw it in the folder. And I would talk about this concept to just about anybody who would listen. Um, and everyone said, sure, when you do it, give me a call. I want to I'll be a part of that. Um, so in 2019, I finally got the courage up to uh, take a step in that direction. And I uh, did a reception. I called it Wine, Women, and Chocolate. And I invited uh, women who I uh, admired, women who I wanted to meet, people that I've met along the way. And I asked them to just come and have a glass of wine and talk about possibilities. And um, over 90 people came. And I explained my idea. And before we left, over 60 of them signed up to be on the committee to make it happen. And it was just amazing um, and really validating. And it really spoke to the need for something like this to be happening in our community. Uh, and that was the beginning of it. You know, um, it's become a kind of a movement. You know, it's, it's not an organization. The Women's Summit is not, you know, a nonprofit. It's really a consortium of women who want to provide showcase opportunities and connections for other women um, to kind of lift everybody up together. Well, that's great. Now, and, and I'd have to imagine that, that there's a sense of purpose mixed in with this similar to, you know, coming from your past nonprofit life. And is that it, that that last point you made, is that the, the articulation of, of what that mission behind Westchester Women's Summit is? Yeah, I feel... Um, a lot of my career has been as a connector. I feel really good when I'm able to connect um, a person to a person. Um, and this is really a great forum uh, to connect uh, women to other women and, and resources that can help them. Um, and not to say that, you know, they are, this is a segment that needs so much help or anything else like that. Um, I, I like to talk about the idea that everyone sort of has a personal well and you give a lot out of your well on a daily basis, you know, nurturing, caring for other people. But there's not often an opportunity for you to kind of sit back and fill your well back up. And what I wanted the Women's Summit to be was a place where you could come together, you wouldn't be judged, you could get some tools and skills that can help you in your life, but also be among people in a judgment free area, you know, so it's not about, you know, what you can do for anybody else, but what you all can do for each other. That's great. And, and, you know, is there a, is there an ideal attendee that you seek out? Is it a mixture of different, you know, uh, personas out there? Who is it that you're, you're speaking to? Well, our, um, our history for this event has shown that the women and some men who come are people who are um, generally uh, professionals um, who um, have multiple irons in the fire 
Uh, a lot of them are responsible not only for their kids, but for their parents and sometimes for a little bit more. Um, and it's, it's people looking for um, just a little bit more um, inspiration. And we've been really lucky to have some speakers who just have outstanding stories and have shared their journeys with the folks that have come. And um, I really think that everyone walks away with a little something more than they came in with. So that, that to me um, is, is really exciting. And, and it's not any one type of person, everyone's welcome. Um, we, were, we even have you know, students who come, we have, I think our age range goes from you know, 25 to 75. We, we have everyone coming. Oh, there we We're go. just going to bring the page up quick so that everybody can see and learn a little bit more about the summit because um, it is it's March 10th. So it's coming up next week. It's at the Sinesta downtown White Plains. Very easy to get to. Great space. Look at all these happy faces. Are all those people really this happy when they come? Because, I mean, I want to go. Yeah. Actually, wait, I can I can say yes to that. Look at this. Yes, that was last year. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, you know, happy there's faces. wine involved, so I guess that's really, it gets everybody pretty happy. Uh, hey. Well, it, this is it's pretty amazing. Hey, listen, you've got some great speakers lined up. Uh, tell us about your keynote. So, yeah, April Ryan is really interesting. She's our keynote. She's going to be at the breakfast portion of the day. Um, we have uh, workshops and keynotes kind of all day long, but April is um, uh, this year's uh, keynote. Last year we had um, Chita Rivera, you saw, and Tamika yeah. Mallory. And the year before we had Susan Rice and Gretchen Carlson. Um, April is the longest serving African-American white female um, White House uh, news correspondent. She's been there for five administrations. Wow. Um, not only that, is she's this very staunch supporter of truth in reporting. Um, she's, mm -hmm. she's authored a bunch of books, um, but she's a strong woman who has a platform and she uses that platform to bring up underrepresented groups to the forefront. So she's an example to me of someone using their voice to help others. And that's an inspirational point that we're hoping people can get out of this as well. Well, that's great. I mean, talk about connecting, you know, people with, uh, you know, the, the types of individuals that they, they could, you know, learn something from. I mean, now is this, I, I, I have to know, I mean, is this somebody that you've, you've come to know, or is it somebody that you were just hoping to, uh, to attract for this type of event? Well, when we um, talk about putting the event together, I bring yeah. together a group of people to discuss possibilities. And, um, you know, she was one of the ones to, that was available, of course, on the day that we were looking, but also one of our top choices uh, to invite. And well, we're also, I, you'll see, uh, excited to have Letitia James, the Attorney mm -hmm. General of New York, to come and join us as well. So that will be an exciting end to the day. She'll be part of the uh, evening reception. It's pretty incredible. Okay. I mean, this Absolutely. is, you've always had exceptional people there um, in both the audience and presenting. And I know you have a lot of different workshop spaces. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about the workshops as well? Um, sure. There's all um, there's lots of different types of um, skills that you can get. We've got people talking about um, uh, advocating for women's health. We've got people doing uh, self defense classes. We've got people talking about mentorship and sponsorship and how to bring people with you and move them along. We've got um, people talking about how to be an ally, how to use your um, your relationships to help others move forward. We've got uh, workshops about public speaking. We've got workshops about um, ageism and sexism, um, how to negotiate and not to leave money on the table. Uh, you can pretty much find any type of subject here. Um, I think the hardest part is going to be deciding which of the three of the 12 that we have that mm -hmm. you will go see. All right. So it just becomes a scheduling issue. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Ryan, I yeah. think you should go to attend Emily and Aaron's Krav Maga class. That's what I think. I actually would really be interested in something like that. Um, but I would I like know. to I mean, see them practice on you. I was going to, I knew where you were going with that. Do they need someone to practice on and they could beat me up? That's I think that would be great. I don't know that that's <laughs> what I was looking for exactly. Anything. Yeah, exactly. I'll learn something on the way down. <laughs> well, I see we have a few other friends here with Casey, 
Morbido, she's exceptional. Melissa oh, Du, she's fantastic. But to, uh, what is the Trailblazers lunch panel? What's that all about? Um, so we thought um, that we have so many wonderful people in our community uh, women of women who have jobs that are traditionally maybe um, dominated by men. And we were looking to use this Trailblazers panel as an opportunity for us to learn a little bit more about their journey to leadership, but also to talk about maybe what advice they might give their younger selves. So um, we were thrilled to have Fiona Bruder join us. She is the president of the Americas at George P. Johnson Experience Marketing. Um, Kimberly Davis is a senior executive with the National Hockey League. And of course, Dee Del Bello um, running West Fair Communications for so many years. Um, you know, they each have an interesting story to share. And uh, we were thrilled to have Dana Tyler from CBS News um, agreed to be our moderator for this panel. So she'll be uh, taking uh, questions and, and leading us, uh, leading them through uh, their stories. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, there's, there's clearly a lot of content there that, uh, you know, is certainly appealing. And uh, I think it, uh, it, it seems like a, an exciting event. So I'm, I'm glad that, you know, uh, I'm glad that you've, you've gone and, and put it together again. It was a great event the, the last couple of years. We were happy to be a part of it. So, uh, you know, it, it's shaping up for, uh, for year number three, lucky number three. Yeah. And the first one live, the last two were virtual. So that's this right. is really exciting to put everyone together in a room and really have the uh, synergies that come out of that. So what's that transition been like for you? Is it, is it more, I would have to imagine it's more familiar. Um, it is. I mean, when we first uh, started this uh, in March of, well, and this was originally March of 2020. And sure. um, what had happened that year was 10 days before we were slated to go live. Of course, the world sort of shut down. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point we had about 500 people coming and sponsors and speakers and every last person, save for maybe 13 people, um, actually came with us virtually when we moved it to September. So that, again, kind of undermines the need for events like this, because no one was willing to not come just because we couldn't come together. Um, so it, it's, um, it was, we had every intention to go live. So I was ready to do this. And I had all these great ideas. Um, and then, you know, you had to pivot. Um, and so we did uh, for the last two years. But being live, I think, adds a different energy. And I can't wait to see everybody and to, you know, communicate with them and, and share and just be a part of a day um, where we can just, you know, help each other out. Oh, hey, Ryan, do you happen to have uh, an example of when we went to the virtual, the quick turnaround there in uh, 2020? I think I do. Of course, it doesn't oh. fit the whole screen because I'm terrible. But uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah. And I think it was actually one of the first major events that happened in 2020 that went virtual. Mm. And so I, I, I applaud you um, because we set the standard, I think, moving forward for virtual events uh, with that whole process. Oh, absolutely. Well, and, and again, it, you know, it, it was a strange time. And we were all kind of figuring things out as we went, but uh, you know, I, again, it, it it did come together very well, and and I you know I re I remember being appreciative that we were involved in it. So uh, certainly, uh, you know, certainly one to remember. And, and again, we're looking forward to the next one. You know, I had one other question because I noticed up top here it says 2023 Spotlight is on Girls Inc. Could you tell us? What is what is a, a spotlight? What what is what is it about that organization that made you want to highlight them? So um, you you may already know that in Westchester County, there's over five thousand nonprofits, um, and a good number of them deal with and support um, women. Um, and when we were putting together the Women's Summit um, after the first year, we thought you know this would be a really good place to showcase a different organization every year and let a greater uh, audience learn a little bit more about what's being done right here. Um, this year, actually, the women's women, uh, the Westchester Women's Agenda are going to actually be presenting their um, report on women in Westchester. It's an annual uh, uh, 
investigation that they do and a report that tells you just like what's happening. It gives you the status of, of where we're at here in, in Westchester as women and what's available, what we still need to work on. So I'm excited to hear about that. But our focus this year is really on Girls Inc. And um, Girls Inc actually has a tagline, which I love, which is um, they want to encourage women, young women to be stronger, smarter, and bolder. And that's really kind of what this whole day is about. Um, girls Inc. is a girls only kind of platform. It brings young girls together so that they can learn um, topics like media and financial literacy. They, they talk about violence prevention. Um, they work on leadership. Um, they do college readiness and STEM. But a big proponent of Girls Inc. is a mentorship. And it's about um, one person helping another person. Um, and, and that's really kind of at the core of what the Women's Summit movement is all about. Mm -hmm. And we thought that it was really the best connection um, for this year. Absolutely. Well, it definitely seems like, a, you know, the missions are, are aligned there. And uh, we actually did hear from uh, Monica from Girls Inc. Oh, uh, there she is. <laughs> so thank you, Monica, for, uh, for tuning in. So that, that's, that's nice to tie it all together. There we go. Well, it seems like that's the purpose. You mentioned yourself being a connector and how you've always seen yourself like that. And this is really a perfect example to bring it all together, right? The community, the nonprofits, you know, being a part of something like Girls Inc. It, it's, it's very impressive. It's a great event, really a great event. So, uh, Rose, how do, how do people... Uh, how do they learn about the event? How do they get involved? How do they buy tickets? What do they got to do? So the website that you have up, um, which is uh, www.virtualmeetinghub.com, um, has opportunities for you to um, become a sponsor, to get tickets. Um, what, there are two kinds of tickets. There's a general ticket, which is um, $200. And there's also a VIP ticket, which gets you access into our um, private receptions with the speakers. I mean, you got to go people. VIP. You got to go VIP. Don't yeah. look back. And, you know, just because um, we are uh, together here, I'm also offering a discount code for those who um, would like to be uh, able to attend and, and want a little bit taken off the top there. So um, if you use the code um, TED25, that's TED25, that'll... Uh, reduce your ticket cost. Um, okay. Oh, there you go. The other thing that you might, um, uh, we didn't talk about is that there's a discovery village at the um, event. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you scroll all the way down, um, there's a whole list of folks that have already um, come on as sponsors, but at the end, there's a, a group that's called promotional partners. And these are nonprofits that will have display tables in the discovery village which is um, sponsored by the Westchester Library System. So you'll be able to pick up information from all of these organizations and learn uh, a little bit more about how they can help you day to day. Oh, that's fantastic. There we go. Very cool. Is that? All right, great. Um, so yeah, there's still time to buy tickets. Um, still time to do a sponsorship. Would be happy to put you on our list of sponsors. Um, and thank you to all of those who did step forward to help support this. This is um, something that I do personally. So each of these people have given resources or time or money to help make this happen. So we are doing it as a collaboration. Um, there's there's no uh, Mr. Moneybucks behind the scenes putting this together. <laughs> um, but we believe in it. And, um, you know, I thank you guys for stepping up. I thank Harrison Edwards for doing all of our PR. Um, and we've had some outstanding corporations and individuals step forward to make sure that this could happen. Oh, that's great. Well, hey, it's uh, it's nice when, you know, the, the community comes together in support of a, of a good cause and and you're leading the charge on that. So so thank you as well, Rose. That's excellent. Excellent. There we go. Mike Dardano. This is going to be a wonderful event. He's on board. He's on board. <laughs> if Mike's Somebody in... is going to be there with a with a selfie stick, taking photos and blasting them out everywhere. Thank you. Mike. There's going to be sunglasses involved. <laughs> One eye photos. I mean, we know it's the real deal if Mike Dardano is involved. Well, this is great. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put the, uh, the discount code as well up into our, um, 
all of our socials here so that people have an opportunity. There's a week left. You got to get out there. You got to buy those tickets right now. And you got to go VIP. Come on now. Don't, mm-hmm. don't go second class. Let's do it. Let's do this. I mean, I feel like I'm VIP right now. You're basically VIP. But I mean, you know, Mike Dardano's I'm VIP. VIP. There you go. We're going to drop that in there. Beautiful. Okay. Great. Rose, this is going to be awesome. So yeah. any final words on the, on the summit, on the big summit next week? Well, I'm excited to have it happen. I'm excited to see everybody. I know that we um, we're really proud of what we've been able to put together. You will definitely leave with a lot more um, tools and inspiration to keep you moving forward. Fantastic. Well said. Very good. That's a, that's a great way to wrap this up today, Rose, because I know you have another meeting in just a few minutes. So, <laughs> Yeah, meeting with the panelists um, for the uh, lunch panel. So we're going to talk about what we're going to talk about. Very good. Right. Well, th- we won't tie you up too long then. So we, we appreciate all your time today. Yes. I know you're, you Thank have a lot of much. things happening. And uh, it's going to be a great event. Everybody got to show up. Westchester Women's Summit. Here's the address, www.svirtualmeetinghub.com. And don't forget that the AVX Live audience, discount code. I mean, who? look at who we are. Come on. Exclusivity. Boom. Look at that. You're all VIPs to us. I mean, here we go. Well, thank you so much for having me and for allowing me the opportunity to talk about this. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you guys, too. Thank you. Thanks very all right, much, Rose. Rose. We'll see you soon. We'll talk to you later. Bye now. Mr. Right. Finch, it was pretty good, huh? It Absolutely. Was an exceptional event. And uh, it really was just 10 days or so before, you know, kind of everything had to change. I know, yeah. Um, it feels like so long ago now. But yet this event, it picked up a lot of steam. The keynote speakers have been exceptional when we were virtual. And, uh, and now we're actually going to get to see everybody in person. I think it's going to be a really a fun event. Absolutely. No, I, I enjoyed working behind the scenes in the first two. So I, uh, you know, I, everything coming back in person has been really a joy to, uh, to be a part of again. So, so yeah. And this is such a prime networking event as well. Mm. That's, I mean, the VIP alone, I know I'm joking around about the VIP ticket, but, um, uh, I'm re- I mean, I'm not go buy the VIP ticket and, uh, <laughs> but I mean, now you have the opportunity to network, with some of these keynote speakers and mm. really the, the key people who are involved in putting it together. And I, I think it's a great opportunity. Absolutely. So uh, Mr. Finch, you've had a few weeks off. I'm really hoping that you come up with a good ending, but I'm before we get there, why don't you tell people how they can find us? I don't know how I'm supposed to think and talk at the same time, but here it so goes. Fast. You can find us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube live. You can do that every Wednesday, one o'clock. You can at least find one of us every Wednesday at one o'clock. Who knows? Not which sure which one. Uh, and uh, while you're there, you should drop us a comment, be part of the show. Be like Monica from girls Inc. Thank you, Monica. And uh, if you have any questions, we will answer them live. And also you should like comment, share, subscribe, all the above. It is much appreciated. It helps us keep this going. And if you missed this, check out YouTube for a video library and also the bite-sized pieces on Facebook and Instagram. And you put LinkedIn there too. I don't even read that. No, I told you, I, I, I deleted that comment, so I didn't have it right away. Oh, no. All right. I well, just wanted to mess with you a Hey, Joe, bit. you can go check out our video library and go check out what you wrote previously. And then... That's so uh, fun. Oh, well. Absolutely. Oh, so, uh, so that's it. That's all, all for right. today, folks. All right. Look, once again, final, check out www.virtualmeetinghub. You can buy your tickets there for the Westchester Women's Summit. And while you're there, discount code TED25. TED you know, 25. we had a TED party a number of years ago for TED, the little bear, the talking bear. I'm just saying. I think that's TED, the event department, Joe. Okay. It's a that's- little different. I mean, that's less fun, though. No, it's not. Ted was a talking bear. You just he like him because he's a talking bear from Boston. He's from Boston. I mean, what kind of... He's the <laughs> best Lumber. talking bear around. <laughs> Either way. Oh, boy. Off the rails. Hey, wait. Can I do my sign-off first? All right. Go for All it. All right. Here we go. You ready? Here it comes. Here's my new sign-off. Sayonara, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. 
You can't do that. I did. It's already done. You, you can't take my tagline. I can't. Thank you, everyone. Already. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah, he said it anyway. <laughs> <laughs>